Hi everyone, thanks for dropping by my YouTube channel today where I'll be testing a Quadrifier 230-1131 pellet stove controller. This controller is in an all gray box. It is a three speed controller and came out of a 1000 insert pellet stove. For this controller, I replaced the two mechanical relays that were connected to the start function and to the igniter and I replaced the two solid state relays for the convection fan and the exhaust fan. I have it connected to my tester right now and I'm ready to power it up but before we do that I'll go ahead and describe my tester. I have the controller itself it's connected to a wiring harness which is connected to my tester it's also connected to a thermocouple temperature simulator which I currently have set to approximately 61 degrees Fahrenheit I have a thermostat as well I also have a green call for heat lamp over here, that's an indicator, which will come on when I use the thermostat to call for heat. Behind everything here on my tester, I have four light bulbs that are used to simulate different functions of your stove. The first is the igniter, followed by the exhaust fan, followed by the auger motor marked in yellow, and the convection or room fan marked in red. So let me go ahead and turn on the pellet stove tester which will turn on the controller and we'll see some of the lights come on. So you notice that I'm still not calling for heat. I do not have a call for heat request on my thermostat. For the startup the convection or room fan has come on and so has the exhaust fan. Let's go ahead and do a call for heat using the thermostat. That will turn on the auger motor, the igniter and we'll see the call for heat lamp come on. As you see, all of those things happen. The igniter bulb is now on, which means that the heater element would be heating up. The auger motor lamp is on, which means the auger would be spinning. And our call for heat lamp is on, telling us that the thermostat wiring is OK. We can leave it in this mode for approximately two minutes, at which time the controller will shut off the auger motor and stop feeding pellets into the fire pit. I've already pre-tested that function. And I've marked on the controller that the 2 minute 30 second timer correctly functioned. The 8 minute and 15 second timer for the heater element also functioned correctly. And the 14 minute timer to shut off the exhaust fan if the heat of the fire has not risen above 250 degrees Fahrenheit will also shut off. That's a safety feature that needs to happen. As you just saw there, the auger motor was shut off by the controller. That functioned correctly, so my first timer check was right. With the call for heat on, if we stay in this mode for approximately 8 minutes, 6 more minutes, the igniter will shut off. And if we were to stay a total of 14 minutes altogether, the heater element would shut off. I've also noted on the controller that the green light on the side of the controller over here will come on at approximately 255 degrees Fahrenheit. And the red light also on the side of the controller over here will come on at approximately 950 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that we're calling for heat, let's raise the temperature of the fire pit, as seen by the thermocouple. We're currently at 61 degrees Fahrenheit, and as I do increase the temperature and reach the temperature of 255 degrees Fahrenheit, as I noted on the controller, we'll see the green light over here come on. So let me raise that. Additionally, when I reach that point, we should see the auger motor come on. 230, there we go. The auger motor just came on momentarily, so at 255 degrees Fahrenheit, with the green light on, the auger will start cycling. I can continue to increase the thermocouple temperature up to 950 degrees Fahrenheit, and we should see the red light on the side of the controller come on. So let me go ahead and do that. 500 degrees, 6. So as I approach 930, we, sh we see the light come on. There we go. I can... I can turn down the temperature, turn up the temperature, and we see the green light comes on. So now we're in self-sustaining mode. The igniter is no longer required, the exhaust fan is running, and the auger is cycling on and on to continuously feed pellets into the fire pit. That mode will continue as long as we have the green light for the call for heat lamp being on. If the room temperature rises and opens the thermostat, such as I would do here, we see that the auger will stop running, stop feeding pellets into the fire pit, and the fire will cool a little bit. As the room cools, the thermostat will come back into play. It'll turn on again, 
and we see the auger motor start feeding pellets into the fire pit once again. As long as we have the red light over here still on, we will not have the igniter come back up, and as long as we're calling for heat, the auger motor will continue feeding pellets into the fire pit, the fire will continue to roar, the room will rise in temperature until the thermostat opens, then the auger stops feeding pellets, like this. The room will cool a little bit. Once the room cools, the thermostat closes again, causing the auger motor to start feeding pellets. That cycle will continue as long as we're calling for heat and as long as we remain in the red light zone above 950 degrees Fahrenheit. If we were to fall below 950 degrees Fahrenheit where the red light goes off, the igniter will come back into play. So let's turn that down. There we see the red light went off and the igniter came back on. That will stoke the fire, causing the temperature to rise and the red light to come back on, thus turning off the igniter. So that cycle will continue on and off, on and off, on and off, as long as the thermostat is calling for heat. If the user were to turn off the thermostat by setting it to the coldest position, then the stove would no longer feed pellets into the fire pit. The fire would cool down and smolder out. One last thing I want to check at this time is the function of the three-speed motor control. To do that, I'll need to turn off the controller and connect a small electric motor into the circuitry here. So let me do that. I just now connected a small AC motor in parallel with the convection or room fan. When I apply power to the controller, the controller will attempt to turn on the convection or room fan. We'll see that by the light with the red indicator come on. And at the same time now, we'll hear the sound of the small sewing machine motor that I connected in parallel to it come up. That will give us an audio indication of the change of speed. Just be aware that this motor is not the type of motor that would be used on a furnace, so it will spin a lot faster than what you're accustomed to hearing. Let's go ahead and do that. So here we have the little motor spinning. It's not too bad noise-wise. And I have my three-speed switch. It'll make a small difference, but we'll see the intensity of the light will switch as well. We can hear the motor spinning up, slowing down, spinning up, slowing down, spinning up, slowing down. So it's the three-speed motor. I have the center position, lower or upper. Let me go ahead and turn this off now. So there we have it. This controller appears to be fully functional. If you have a need for such a controller, whether as a replacement for one that you currently have that's failed, or if you just want a backup, then this controller would do very well for you. I urge you to check out my eBay auction. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you happen to have a controller of your own that you'd like to have repaired, please feel free to contact me. My contact information will be in the video description down below. And I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that very much. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.